G'day guys, we're doing long exposure tests, all the different apps that I've got on my phone in five minutes. Let's see which one's the best. Let's explain the scene first. We've got this fast flowing water right here, rocks in the foreground, grass on the other side, trees on the far side of that. What I'm looking for here is ease of use, focusing on all the different things in the one long exposure photo. I'm not too concerned about the RAW or the JPEG file, it doesn't matter to me uh, in this particular case, because we're gonna even shoot with the camera with the long live ex uh, long exposure through the live method there. So first up, we're gonna use Camera Plus. Now in Camera Plus, you've got a number of features that you can use there. We're using the slow shutter in this time here. We're gonna go for eight seconds. Eight seconds. Focus on the foreground there. Uh, with long exposures, I generally say go about a third into the frame. So we'll go just there and hit the shutter. Now we wait, this is gonna export a JPEG file. We'll have a look at all these photos from all the different apps. I'll put them on the website at shamewilson.com. You can download the lot and see what you see for yourself, which one you think is the best. Slow shutter is done. Let's go to the next app. Let's try Reflex straight off the bat. I know it's a good app. You know it's a good app. We're gonna go, turn that on for motion. We're gonna go up to eight seconds again if we can. If we can't, we're gonna to go to 10. 10 will do. Focus the same point. Hit the shutter, and now we wait. I love that you can see in both these apps so far, the photo building in that photo, like the water getting all nice and smooth. It's just ripper. Reflex is done. Let's go for slow shutter cam. Haven't used this for, <laughs> for a couple of years, I would say. Let's go out here. Got to remember how to use this thing. Go to the gear. Blur strength, we'll just go maximum. Yeah, we'll do that. Shutter speed, we'll go to eight seconds. Leave the ISO, ISO low. Hit the shutter. Again, this is looking pretty bloody good. All of these are looking good. Uh, oh, better go back in there because you've got to save that photo. So we'll save that photo. That's done. Let's go to the next one. Uh, moment. Moment. Using moment is very much like using reflex. You're going to hit that little gear icon up there. Slow shutter. There we go. Motion blur. Hit the motion blur. We'll go eight seconds. Touch out there for focus. Hit the shutter button. Off we go. Are we getting this done in five minutes? I bet we do. <coughs> it helps when I've set all this up originally. That photo is done. What's next? We got ProCam. ProCam motion blur, eight seconds. Focus there. Shutter button, off it goes. This is the quickest I've ever done long exposures. That's kind of an oxymoron in itself, isn't it? All these are looking pretty bloody good. And live photo from the camera app. And we'll convert that one to long exposure in, oh, we'll do it right now. Live, long exposure, done deal. Let's go back to the camera. What's the last app we want to look at? Even longer. Put that back to zero. I'm going to change to eight seconds. And get out there for focus. It's all set properly. I've got a countdown on this one because I use it all the time. And it's shooting right now. That looks to me like it's a bit overexposed. We're going to bring that back a little bit. All of these have exposed pretty well. I don't like how this one's done it. So we'll bring that back. It's going to go one step down. We'll take the same photo. That looks better already. Looks much better. All right, that's all the photos done from all the apps. Let's put them on the computer and do a bit of pixel peeping, see what we like and what we don't like. Let's go back to the office. So back in the office, have a look at these things on the bigger screen. First photo we wanna look at here, and what I'm looking at here is a few different things. Now I know you're thinking, you didn't shoot them all raw, this isn't an even test, and well, quite frankly, I don't care. 
we'll do something more in depth with raw photos. This is aimed at, I guess, the beginner, someone who's putting their toe in the water, so to speak, with long exposures. You're going to use a tripod. There's apps out there that you don't use a tripod. We'll talk about them in another video. But in this particular case, I'm talking about putting something on a tripod. Look at the pricing. I listed all the pricing there. That's all in Australian pricing. All over the world, in different countries, the pricing is going to be a little bit different um, for whatever reason. It's not bloody transport costs. That's for damn sure. But we all get screwed in pricing. We'll look at all these photos as a whole. And we'll see, one of them I screwed up pretty bad on. We'll get to that in a second. But we'll see which ones are good and which ones are bad. To be honest, I don't think any of them are that bad. First photo we're looking at here is the Camera Plus photo. If we look down the bottom there on the screen, um, that to me looks well and truly in focus. Those rocks that are down the bottom there, out the back, the trees are starting to get a little bit, uh, little bit blurry. But overall... This is a sensational photo. Dead set easy to use. Sky's starting to get a little bit blown out, but I think we're going to get that in all the photos. Next photo that we look at. Not quite zoomed out that there yet. I don't know how to use my computer apparently. Let's go to the next photo. This is hard because they all look bloody same. This is the reflex photo. Again, easy to use. All of these were easy to use with the exception of one, I suppose, but that's more a bit more advanced than the others. Reflex, rocks are in focus, trees are in focus, all of it's in focus, the water looks good. Overall, you'd be happy with this photo as well. This is the one I screwed up on. This is the slow shutter cam, and in the menu for slow shutter cam, you've got resolution. Because I don't use this app nearly as often as the others, I left it at 720p, and it's bloody small. But realistically, looking at the photo, even blowing this up, I'll zoom into this thing and uh, we'll have a look. It's well, The resolution's busting it out, but the rocks look like they're in focus. The water looks good. It all looks good. It's just this one that's screwed up. Get back out of there. And we'll go to the next one. Next one here is Moment. Moment looks to me like it's pretty well the same as Reflex, the results look pretty well the same as Reflex. All these so far are shot in raw. Um, there's not much else I could add to that. The water looks good, the rocks look good, the trees look good, the haze through the trees, they've all had that so far. You'd be happy with all of these. The only reason that I wouldn't be too happy with the Moment app is the pricing, the structure, certainly here in Australia, it leaves me to be a little bit concerned. I bought these apps ages ago, They've probably changed the pricing structure since then. Uh, in fact, the uh, the Camera Plus has a new new uh, modes and stuff in the app, but I'm using the legacy version of it. Anyway, let's get to the next one, ProCam. This is the ProCam one. In my opinion, it's probably on par with slow shutter. Um, I don't think the water looks as good in this. What I'll show you is, I'll go down the bottom here. Like how that water gets around that rock, it looks like it's full of artifacts. Uh, and the shiny parts on the rocks, I think it looks like artifacts. I don't, I don't think it's as good as the others. And the next one, where are we up to now? This is the camera app. And I've always said to people, I use the camera for everything until it doesn't do what I want it to do. Then I'll employ an app like a long exposure app usually. And in this particular case, this is probably the worst photo of the bunch. And I didn't do anything unusual with it. I did it exactly how I would use this app to do, well, the camera app using the live mode to, to convert it to a slow shutter, a long exposure photo. But most of it's out of focus. It's unusual for the camera app to do it that badly. I think there's a bit too much going on in this photo for the app to keep up with. A dedicated app is probably what you need here. And the last photo we'll look at is even longer. Now, this to me is bloody good. Um, the difference in all of these is that this was a raw photo, all the rest were JPEGs. That's something that I, I should have shot it in a raw, uh, in, a, in a JPEG to, to make it an even playing field. But we'll certainly push this app against things like uh, uh, Re-Expose and something else that shoots raw long exposure. I don't know of any that off the top of my head that do, but if you do know, put a link down, to, well, 
put a comment down the bottom, I should say, and uh, I'll get that app and we'll we'll see how we go. But I'll head back to this location and we'll shoot more with more advanced settings in different apps. I think, generally speaking, we live in a bloody good time where apps like this exist, like all of these exist. They're not they're not horrendously expensive, any of them. Um, some of them have subscriptions, some of them don't. But the results, if you're looking to do artwork like this and print these things and put them on your wall, most of these are going to give you a good result. Even Long is going to give you probably the best result. Reflex and Moment are probably right there behind it. Um, but anyway, we'll get up there, shoot some more in-depth stuff, concentrate on the composition a bit harder. I was really looking in this video to see what the water was going to do and what the focusing was going to do. And they've all nailed it, with the exception, I would say, of the, the live mode and probably slow shutter. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. I'll catch you later.